Wu Ji Hundun form has a long history mm. and it's traced back over 800 years mm. from the Zhiliang family. And I was very honored to learn it from Master Duan Zhiliang when I lived in China. And I lived with him for two years. It was an amazing experience. He's a tough teacher. He was 93 when I met him, it was a long time ago. And he explained to me the whole story about his family. And he was so emphatic at one point, he made me travel on my own, and I wasn't even speaking Mandarin very well back then, down to Xi'an and out in an obscure field outside an old school was a tablet, a stone tablet, Da Qingjing Jiao. And this tablet explained the origins of Christianity into China through the Silk Road. It was actually found on the Silk Road. Mm. Curious, why did that have to do with Wuji Qigong? Master Duan was Catholic. Mm. And his Qigong form had bridged in, who knows how ancient before 800 years ago, into this new way of thinking that combined Taoism and Christianity type of beliefs into a Qigong style that had perpetuated now for 800 years. So when I met Master Duan in the early 90s, he was a very famous teacher in China, but he was a Taoist. He didn't go out and promote himself. Mm -hmm. He didn't go out to conferences. He was a quiet guy that you had to seek out. You had to find him if you wanted. And he hadn't met very many foreigners, European foreigners for that matter, when I met him. And he had a few students and I had a chance to hang with him and it was tough. He's a martial artist and a doctor, a traditional Chinese medicine doctor. So he put me through the ringer of having to learn acupuncture, how to learn martial arts. And basically when you're an assistant of an old master like that, you are in a very humbling place. Mm -hmm. And we had to wake up before dawn every morning. Mm -hmm. We had to go out into the streets of Beijing. Many times we went out into the countryside and did treatments, Qigong energy treatments and acupuncture treatments on villagers. This is all part of the kind of training you go through when you're with a master. And you might go hours in the day before you actually get any kind of a lesson until you realize, oh my goodness, every minute with this master is a lesson sleeping in the same clinic with this guy where we had to close the blinds every night in the clinic because when the military police came around, I was in parts of the city that foreigner wasn't allowed back then. It's very interesting. Master Duan was really generous and he has a beautiful big heart and his wife used to cook me meals in their apartment and we would share gifts back and forth. And this was the old way, I realized, eating a meal with the master, running errands with him, teaching classes with him to his Chinese students. But he was really frustrated because a lot of the Chinese students there were not as serious as me. I had given up my whole life to come to China to study. You know, not with him particularly. I was looking for masters and studying Qigong. But when I happened upon him, he actually called me out. It was a strange, long story, but a beautiful story. I really became devoted to his style and his humble but very firm approach to qi, teaching Qigong. Because for him, Qigong was more than just a set of movements. His students were learning the movements. What he was trying to impart in me, and I pray I can have absorbed as much as I can from him, is that there is a deep philosophical, almost shamanic level to the Wuji Hundun style. This means that even the name carries a very mystical old Taoist energetic to it. Wu Ji, this is the, the infinite universe, that universal energy. Wu Ji actually means the, the end, Ji means the end of Wu, which is non-beingness. What a complex concept, an ancient concept. What is the edge of my existence? What does that mean to be alive? So we're actually looking at the ontological roots of our existence in Qigong. I thought Qigong was just about breathing and movement. For Master Duan, Qigong was about revisiting who you were as a person. You know, he was a master of comparative religions. He looked at what it meant to incorporate your belief system to revisit your belief system, to question your belief system. And by doing that, 
you look at your own ego, you look at your own body, your, your awareness, and then you start shifting what you thought was real, what you held on to. And most of the time we find out that the things that we hold on to is what got us into our problems in the first place, our emotions, our belief systems, whatever it happened to be, got us into that chronic, habitual repetition that created our illness. And some people could say, well, I'm not sick. Well, we all have a sickness. We all have something that keeps us from being who we are. And Master Duan attacked that with that martial arts fervor. And he put me through a lot to make me question who I was. And I'm fortunate because I had lots of teachers since I was 18 years old. So I had lots of years before I met him to come up to this. But then all of a sudden, Master Duan took it to another level. And by putting the form, the Wuji Hundun form behind it, we had a structure all of a sudden. And I worked with him for years to get that structure, to ask him questions about each form. What were the names of each form? What was the intention mm -hmm. behind each form? Mm -hmm. And then I started to realize each of these specific moves carried that philosophical and shamanic level to it for our own transformation. I think what makes the Wuji Hundun form unique is that it goes right to the source of Qi, which is really interesting. For Master Duan, he saw us as this perfect being. Mm. We already are immersed in this Wu Ji, this infinite field of Qi. So what else do we need to do with Qi? Yeah. Our bodies carry the blocks. Our bodies carry the stagnation, not the Qi stagnation, the blocks in our body's ability to access Qi. That was Master Duan's genius. Hundun, the second word in the Wuji Hundun style, the Hundun means chaos. And let me tell you, I really had to go in. Why do I want to bring more chaos into my life? I already have a pretty chaotic life. Mm -hmm. For Master Duan is, you don't have enough chaos. You haven't accessed your relationship to chaos to understand how you can heal. So we're in, in an infinite field of Qi. We don't have to gather any more chi, get rid of chi, nothing like this. We're already immersed in the chi. That means to activate that chi effect, I have to simply open my body, the receptor, the temple, the channel. And that channel can have blocks. It could be from anything from tight muscles to any disease states in our body. It could be cramps, it could be constipation. All these things are blocks that give us the illusion that chi isn't flowing. In fact, we're simply not able to allow this temple, this channel, to activate its relationship to chi. For Master Duan, it was about introducing chaos, shake it up. He did that in every way in his life. I promise you, he was the master of chaos. But for the qigong form, when we start to move our body, we hold that intention to introduce the chaos necessary to open up the blocks and shifts, to allow the chi to be activated. And to me, that was what makes this form so beautifully unique. By relating to the chaos in our body, allows us to relate to the chaos in life. And you know, the National Institutes of Health say that more than 70% of all disease and illness comes from stress. So understanding that chaotic aspect of our life or the chaotic aspect of our cellular unfolding in our body means that when we can introduce chaos in a conscious and present way, a heart-centered way, that chaos can shake it up to a point where all of a sudden our body now is a receptive channel that can access the chi, instigate that chi effect, and bring us back into health. Yeah, well, the average Qigong practitioner, you know, the person who wants to learn Qigong for their health and for stress management and for their transformation, whatever level you want to learn Qigong, we have lots of classes around the world for the Wuji Hundun in a workshop. Usually it's a two-day workshop. But there are people who are already teaching Qigong or they're instructors and they would like to add Qigong to their toolkit. That's where we have the Wuji Hundun instructor certification. 
and I've only waited 20 something years to offer this. A lot of people have been asking over the years, but I really take this seriously and to heart. I didn't feel comfortable about offering the Wuji Hundun system as an instructor certification until I really knew it. I mean, to me, it, you have to integrate this stuff deep at the cellular level, deep in your heart. And I also felt moved when Master Duan passed. In 2016, in July, he passed from this planet. Earlier in July, I talked with him. In the last talk I had when I was in China, and he was in China, and we had a chance to talk, it was really moving, and I felt him. I, I, I wanted my heart to believe he was going to be around forever, mm -hmm. but six months later, he passed, and I had actually gone back to China to see him, and it was too late again to see him one more time. But I felt at that moment that it was time to really honor what he left as a legacy because no one else was offering it. A lot of people teach Wuji Hundun, and many people, people I don't even know, have studied with him, and that's beautiful. But I know that I spent a long time with him to get his form down, to structure it, to get him to approve every name of every one of the moves, to really give me that. And I can promise you, he said to me, go out and teach this, go out and teach teachers. This is what he said to me and what he wanted. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we're ready for that now. It's time to, to offer that. And I'm honored that we can go out and teach teachers. I pray that Master Duan is smiling and looking down. <laughs>